In today's video, we're going to look at how you can use dodging and burning to enhance the look of your photos. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and if this is your first time here my name is Dan and I make videos about all sorts of things related to photography and today we're going to be talking about dodging and burning and the reason that I'm making this video is as a result of some of the discussions that I've had with you guys on this channel uh, you guys send me a lot of questions and some of those are related to editing and one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of you are doing your global edits and you are stopping at that point. You're not going in and doing localized editing on your photographs. And I think if you fall into that trap, then you might be leaving a lot of stuff on the table that could turn a good photograph into a great photograph. And that's why we're going to talk about that today. Now, if you don't know what global uh, uh, settings or global adjustments are, when you open up a photograph in Lightroom, say, uh, and you start playing around with the sliders on the right-hand side, things like your exposure, your contrast, saturation, that sort of thing. Those sort of, uh, or those controls there affect the entire photograph. So if you increase your exposure, the whole photograph becomes brighter. And so that's referred to as a global adjustment because it affects the entire image. What I'm talking about with dodging and burning is that when you focus on specific areas of the photograph where you need to make those photographs either brighter or you need to make them darker or in the case of digital photography we have the options now to do things like you know increase saturation um, clarity sharpness that sort of thing but today we're talking about dodging and burning in the traditional sense of photography and that's what we're going to focus on now just to add another component to this discussion a lot of people that are doing dodging and burning are actually doing it in a destructive way and I'm going to explain that in a second because we're going to go into Photoshop and I will show you the right way uh, to do dodging and burning and when I say the right way I mean a non-destructive way there are different ways to do dodging and burning in Photoshop I'm going to give you the simplest one that, that I found and the most reliable way to do it, uh, but it will really give you a benchmark for you to go in there and experiment and come up with different ways of your own. But let's start off by looking at some examples of how dodging and burning can be used to enhance a photograph. So I've got some images here and I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen so that you can see it more clearly. But this is a very, very famous photograph uh, taken by Dennis Stock. Okay, it's a photograph of James Dean. I'm sure that most of you have seen this. So this is the, the image that was published. So this is the image that everyone else got to see, but this is not the image that came out of camera. Um, let me pop that image up on the screen now. I'll put them side by side so that you can see them. And you will notice that on the original image, uh, everything was much darker, okay? Uh, you can see that the building in the back uh, is much darker than on the final version. Um, you can see James Dean's uh, face is also a lot darker. Just generally speaking, it looks like a much darker and a much more dull uh, photograph. Now, I'm going to show you another photograph. And this is uh, the photograph that contains Dennis Stock's notes on what he's going to do on that photograph to turn it into the final image that we just saw. And as you can see, he's actually marked up all the sections that he needs to either dodge or burn because back in the film days, they were the options that we had. We didn't have Photoshop. All you had was an enlarger and some uh, photo sensitive or light sensitive paper that you could expose to light for longer periods of time or shorter periods of time. And that's how you either burnt when it became darker uh, because you exposed the paper to a, a, for a longer period, or when you dodged, when you covered that part of the photograph uh, or that part of the paper so that it didn't record anything on the paper. It really was, it, 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 dodging and burning on, on film is really a, a beautiful thing to watch. Uh, if you've never done it, you should Google it because it really is a very sort of artistic and it, it takes a lot of skill to do right. But as you can see here, he's made loads and loads of notes on the things that he needs to brighten up or d uh, darken. And you can see that there's a lot of work that's gone into this photograph to come up with the, uh, the original or the, the final version that was presented to the public. I've got a few more examples of other photographs that you would have seen, I'm sure. Uh, the next one is this one of uh, Muhammad Ali. And again, you can see all of the different uh, notes that was made. Uh, this one was uh, taken by Thomas uh, Hopper. 
uh, Hopka, sorry. And um, you can see all the different notes that he also made in order to come up with the final, uh, with the final version. And a lot of those numbers are referring to seconds. Uh, that's the way that I used to do it. Everybody has a different technique, uh, but it just means that you would expose the paper for um, more, you know, se several seconds. In in some cases, you know, three seconds, five seconds, eight seconds longer, and so forth, in order to get a darker, uh, a darker part of that image. I'll, I'll give you another one. Uh, again, this is also another one by Dennis Dock, um, and you can see again all the different nodes, and you can see just how much work has gone into creating a photograph just using the dodging and burning. I mean, have a look at the reflections on the door for this one here. In the original one, you can barely see what's there, but on the final version, you can actually see a, a, a clear vision there of the reflections of uh, on the door of, of the people that are standing next to the car. So um, those are some really interesting images. I wanted to show you those first because I wanted to show you the power of dodging and burning. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into Photoshop and I'm going to show you uh, a setup that you can build yourself and um, I might even actually include a an action that you can download. I was a bit reluctant about doing that but I will do it anyway but one of the things that I would suggest is to learn how these uh, these tools work. Learn how to build your own dodging and burning layers because if you memorize something you run the risk of forgetting it but if you learn it you will know it for life and you'll be able to then tweak it and work out problems when they arise. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how this works. Okay here we go we are in Photoshop I'm using Photoshop 2024 um, but it doesn't matter which version you've got it's going to look and behave exactly the same way. So the first question that I get asked uh, when it comes to dodging and burning is why don't I just use the dodging and burning tools that are provided by Photoshop? If you look here on the left hand side, you can see that we have a dodge tool and a burn tool. So why wouldn't you just use those tools there? The reason for that is that when you're using those tools, you're actually overwriting the pixels on the image. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a copy of this layer. I'm going to do a command J or control J. And in fact, let's uh, rename this and we'll call it layer one. So we're going to turn off layer zero. Okay, and we're just going to work on layer one. And what we're going to do is um, let's actually just dodge. I'm looking at these, these trees over here on the ground. It does seem a little bit dark and uh, possibly here on the left. But let's have a look at this section here on the right. I'm just going to uh, brush using the dodge tool in here and uh, maybe just on the ground here a little bit. And uh, hopefully you can tell that that's actually getting a little bit brighter. In fact, I will turn on the bottom layer just so that I can turn this one on and off and you can see the before and after. You can see it's much, much brighter. But what I'm actually doing is I am changing the values and the brightness of the pixels themselves on the image itself. And I don't really want to do that. So um, let me turn off the bottom layer again. And let's say that I made a mistake and I've gone too far. The only way for me to undo that is to do a command or control Z. Or I can try to brush in uh, by using the burn tool. And I can try and burn back the area so that it's darker again. But the problem with that is that I, I can't see where it is that I've dodged to begin with. There's no way for me to tell. Um, and also, how far do I go? I, I don't remember the original brightness level of the photograph. So it's just, it's a tricky way to work and it's not very precise. And that's the reason why most people don't, well, I don't know anyone, anyone that does this um, uh, this way because of that reason. So let me show you another way uh, to do this. We are going to, we're going back to the original layer and now we are going to create an adjustment layer. Now, it's up to you which adjustment layer you use. You can use the curves uh, adjustment layer or what I'm going to use is the brightness and contrast layer. I like this one a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to create that. Um, once we create it, I'm going to um, pin it to the underlying layer. And this is just good practice if you're working on just that one layer. Um, you probably don't have to do it, but it's good practice to do anyway. We are then going to uh, look at the brightness slider. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to make the image really, really bright, okay? I'm going to go as far as um, as far as far it takes to get some detail there in the shadow areas that I want to brighten up, okay? So once I've done that, I'm going to click on the 
the uh, the mask section of that layer and I'm going to do a command I or control I to invert it so essentially it turns the mask black which means none of those effects none of the effect that I just applied is going to show and we are going to double click on that layer and we are going to rename this to dodge okay hit return and we're going to do exactly the same thing again we're going to go again to create uh, another uh, where is it brightness and contrast layer again we're going to pin this and this time we're going to bring it down now what we're looking at is the highlight sections uh, so if you look at the sky over here on the top of the photograph we're going to bring this down until that sort of calms down a little bit and it's not so um it's not so hot and um it doesn't look like it's peaking too much so we're going to do that in fact let's go a little bit darker than that uh there cool okay and uh, what we're going to do is we are going to again click on the mask. We're going to do a command or control I to disable the uh, the mask or to turn it to black so that it's not visible. And we're going to double click in there and we're going to go uh, rename this one to burn. Okay. That's it. You're now set up for dodging and burning in a non-destructive way. Let me show you how this works. We are now going to use the brush tool. Okay, so you can click uh, or press the letter B for the brush and we're going to be working on these two masks okay so it's very important that you don't click on the little um, the little icons here just click on the actual uh, masks themselves okay and then what we're going to do is we are going to set the flow of our brush to 1% okay like I've got up here and opacity of 100 uh, and we got to make sure that we are using also a very soft brush all right, so just pick a soft brush uh, and uh, hard is on zero for mine. So there it is and that's ready to go. Now all I have to do is I start to brush in. I, I pick on dodge which means I want to make things brighter and I just start to brush the sections that I'm trying to make brighter. Okay. Now the cool thing is that we can now turn this layer off and on and we can see the areas that we've affected. Okay. So if it's not enough, just keep brushing over the top of it, okay? And just keep doing that until you reach the levels that you like, okay? So I'm going to keep doing that. And uh, let's actually do a little bit on this left-hand side as well. I think these trunks here could actually do being a little bit brighter. And then maybe this just section over here and maybe just over there. So let's do a before and after by disabling and re-enabling the layer and you can see that that's brought up the trees and to me that looks a lot nicer okay so now we're going to work on the burn section which is the the so how we make things darker uh, initially i just want to have a look at this the, the sky here again the same thing uh, the same settings for the brush you just got a flow of one percent opacity 100 percent, and a very soft brush and i'm going to make it a little bit smaller because i want to brush out a little bit of this bits of the trees just the branches at the end and also the sky a little bit okay and uh, maybe this section here okay let's have a look at before and after okay so it's not as blown out as you can see it mellows out the, the image a bit and uh, the other thing i'm going to do is i'm also going to just um, darken the road a little bit as well i think that the road might be a little bit um, distracting i mean i know it's a it's a a leading line to to the end of the, of the road here but we're going to just try this i think it would actually look quite nice darkening the road just a little bit and just over there so let's have a look at the before and after okay i think that balances that quite nice now obviously you can still play around with the opacity of this layer. So you can uh, you can fine tune it using that as well. Now let me show you something else. Let's say that, um, let's go back to the dodge tool for a second. Um, and let's say that you decide that it's not quite bright enough. So because you've got it on a separate layer, you've still got the brightness controls over here. So you can control the brightness levels from here as well. And it'll, it'll affect only the areas that you've brushed in, 
Okay, so if you wanted to go a little bit brighter, you could do it that way. Okay, you go up to there. Let's go quite hard on that. And exactly the same thing on the burn. So you could go darker or brighter. Okay, so I'm going to leave it about there. I think that that looks quite nice there. A um, couple of other things. Let me have a look uh, that, that, that I want to show you. If you wanted to see um, where you brushed, and if you remember when I initially showed you the, the dodge and burn tool, um, there was no way if you're using the dodge and burn tool on on the image itself, you couldn't tell where you've actually brushed in. But you've got these um, these masks in here now. So if you use the Alt or Option key and you click on those masks, you can see exactly uh, where you've brushed the effect in and how much of that effect you've brushed in. Okay, so that's it's quite hard on on the right hand side as you can see, not so much on the left hand side. So uh, just click on it again. It'll, bring the image back and the same thing on the burn you can see exactly where we've actually where we've worked which is really good because if you then decide that you do not want uh, the effect say on these sections here okay on actually let's say that just to make it easier for you to see the section in the middle okay this bit of sky in the middle if you didn't want that um you just didn't you wanted to reverse that because you just you changed your mind all you got to do is you can brush, instead of brushing white, you can now either press the X key while still using the brush and it will go to black and you can now paint over the top of that. Okay, so you can disable that now. And essentially that is going to, uh, that's going to turn it off. Let me uh, do option and click on the mask again and you can see that that is now gone back to nice and bright. Let me undo that and you can see that the effect is, back on there again okay so uh that is everything that i wanted to show you the other thing it's got nothing to do with the effect itself but one of the things that i like to do is i like to click on both of these uh layers here so you click on the top one click on the bottom one uh, whilst holding the shift key to select both of them and then do a command or control g that will group it and then you can rename that group and you can say uh dodge and burn and the thing that I like that is that it keeps everything organized. If you need to go back and uh, change any of them, all you got to do is just open it up and you can go back and continue doing, like say, if you want to do more do dodge, you can go and continue to, oops, I've got the wrong brush. Let me paint white. You can continue uh, painting on the effect, okay? And uh, you can continue to just, just fine tune the image as much as you like. Um, that is everything I wanted to show you. Again, you don't have to use the brightness and contrast uh, adjustment layers. You could do this with a curve. I just find that the brightness and, and contrast adjustment layer is a little bit more even across the board, uh, whereas the uh, with the curves, if you don't know what you're doing or, um, or you're not very precise, you can bring up only specific areas of the photograph, uh, which also may be handy. Uh, but um, but it's a little bit trickier, and this one here I think gives you a more flattering or more um, not a more flattering but a more even uh, dodge and burn than using the curves. Now, if you want to download the Photoshop Action, I will pop a link in the description of this video uh, so you can find it there. And if you did like this video and you would like to support me, I would really appreciate it if you could click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so because I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell, and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you do have any questions about anything that I covered today, Leave them in the comments section below. That is the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. And again, you're going to find all the links to those in the description of this video. Anyway, that is everything that I've got for you today. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.